Alright guys, I'm back again with another video. Um, I do apologize, man. I've tried to upload a couple videos um, here in the past like two weeks and my phone's been tripping. So eventually I'm going to have to upgrade recording equipment and uh, probably actually get like some legit cameras and stuff because um, I can't have this stuff going on. But I've been trying to upload and I've been having some errors happening with YouTube. And so I apologize for the long drought of videos from my end. But um, look, man, I'm back and I want to talk about the Bulls free agency. Now, with that, I've also wanted to wait a couple weeks before actually discussing the Bulls free agency because, you know, with the Kevin Durant news, the last thing I really wanted to do was make a video. And then poof, there's a whole, oh, Kevin Durant is traded. And, you know, what if it was the Bulls, even though I doubt it, you know, it'd be one of those things where, dang, you know, now I got to go record a whole new video. But I highly doubt that happens now. And um, we're like four weeks in since he's actually requested a trade. So I feel pretty safe in making this video. OK, so with that out of the way, let's actually discuss the Bulls. Um so let me start with this. There was some news that came out yesterday. LeVar said Zoe's improving and he'll be ready uh, for training camp. Now, a lot of people are not taking his word serious because of the whole, hey, Zach Levine's going to the Lakers thing. All right. And I get that. But a lot of people also have the sentiment like, okay, that's Zach Levine. Of course, he's not going to know. But this is his son who has been out there in L.A. pretty much since, you know, the offseason started. So if he's going to know about anybody, it would actually be his son. Now, normally, you could probably say, eh, okay, maybe LeVar is full of shit right here. All right, cool. But Zoe posted a video yesterday, a small snippet on Instagram, um, of him at the gym with his trainer. Now, it's not a video of him actually working out, but it's a video of him being in the gym and stuff. So, and it's just from his from his point holding the camera. So we don't know if he's actually doing work or what. What's, we don't know what's going on with his health. Okay, but all I'm gonna say is you put those two things together, and maybe you start to say, okay he's getting to a place where he can do some more work and that's a positive sign going into you know the start of training camp which is at the middle of uh september which is pretty much a month and a half from now so let's put that to the side okay that that's the first bit of news let's actually talk about free agency here okay now the main thing here is they resize Zach Levine. Okay, what the fuck you do? All right, Zach Levine decided that that money mattered to him, and there was no other place where to go into, so he resigned. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm not giving Acme any points for this. You know, you should retain your major star. You made all these moves to get him uh, comfortable and make him want to stay, and you resigned him. Okay, and Zach himself said he it would be disrespectful for him to take any other meetings, despite the fact that there was all kinds of chatter about the possibility of him going to another team, which is all in all likelihood just Rich Paul smokescreen at this point. Anytime Rich Paul has a major client, he will bump up the market for them. He did the same thing with Zoe, and he will make people start a bidding war to you know get access to his player to make sure they get everything they deserve so that's the first thing now the major parts here is they really only made two signings that's worth a damn and it's not even that they're worth a damn Goran Dragic and Andre Drummond those that that's the off season right there okay nothing more nothing less okay and then there's it's 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 confusing as hell right now. Okay, Let, let's talk about this. Drummond is less so. Drummond just signed, you know, for like the minimum, basically, 
and he's the backup center, and Tony Bradley is pushed to the third wheel, which, you know, that's great for us. But you know what? A lot of people don't realize Andre Drummond isn't even 30 yet. He's like 28, 29 years old, right? So he is technically in his prime, but he doesn't play like his best years like he was in Detroit when the guy was putting up damn near 20 and 20 every game. But, okay, solid defensive backup. Okay, whatever. But Goran Dracic, right? That one is strange as fuck. Because it's not that they just signed him. It's just the promise that he's supposed to also, that, that this has been reported, that he's supposed to get 20 to 25 minutes per game on a roster that features... DeMar DeRozan, yes, I'm putting him as a shooting guard. Because technically that is his position. So I'm going to put him as a shooting guard here. Zach Levine, Caruso, Ayo, and Kobe White. No, I didn't mention Lonzo because we truthfully don't know what's coming. We really don't know. But that's just five guys right there. I didn't even get into Dale and Terry, which would be six. If I include Lonzo, that's seven. You had Goran Dragic, now that's eight guys. And I'm sorry. You mean to tell me he's basically going to get more minutes than all the other guards except Caruso, Zach Levine, and DeMar DeRozan. Yeah, I got a problem with that. I, I I got a problem with that. And if Zoe come back, how the hell is she supposed to get those minutes? Are you cutting away minutes from Io? Yeah, I, I, I got a problem with that, okay? Um, again, there's no way, because this interview was done, if I'm not speaking in Spanish, so there's no way we can actually, you know, unless someone is a fluent Spanish speaker and could go look and, you know, say, okay, this is what was said specifically. But this, like right now, this this is, I I don't know what to say, man. The only thing I can think is they maybe wanted to have Zoe insurance. And to me, it's like, well, you already got Zoe insurance. That's IO. Technically, Dale and Terry, because you drafted the motherfucker. But IO is your Zoe insurance because he's the only person at the guard position that can somewhat play like him in a certain way. I mean, Caruso does too, but Caruso, Caruso is different. But he, he's, you know, you see what I'm saying? There, there, there's really nobody on that team that can replicate Zo. Hell, there's hardly anybody in the league that can probably replicate what Zo does. But the point is, there's nobody really on that team other than I think Ayo that's like almost like a if you want to talk about a clone for clone fit, that replicates so. And so I don't get the point of the drudge. It's like, you know, I've heard people say his shooting, but from the looks of it, his shooting has gone down like within the last few years, or well, at least last year. And so, okay, you know, I could get the idea of addressing shooting, but still the whole point of Acme was talking about we needed more size. And I know they got, uh, I think the guy's name is Justin Lewis or whatever or something, but you know, they got him um, like immediately after the draft and signed him as a, uh, they basically signed him as an undrafted free agent, okay? And from all accounts and looks, he, he seems to be pretty good. You know, he, he's a pretty solid wing player, but I don't really see the size. I mean, Drummond, okay, cool. You got a big, all right? But we're still cheeks on the wing. And by the wing, I mean power forward. And, and, and you know what? I'll give us a pass on small forward. I think we're okay small forward. I would still prefer more link on, on at, or height at the small forward position, but I'll give him a pass there, okay? But I'm, power forward, I don't see it. I mean, I, I just don't see it, man. Where is the where's the size? 
Like, who are we going to put on Giannis? And I know Giannis shouldn't be the standard, but I'm thinking more. It's not just Giannis. It's Giannis. It's Jared Jackson Jr. Yes, he's like 6'9", 16. John Collins, who probably should have went after. And I'll get into that in a minute. You know, possibly Wendell Carter Jr., uh, Frank Wagner. Like, and I know some of these guys are like not necessarily proven. But my point is, you know, Kuzma, you know, there's there's some solid talent at the power forward position, and we simply don't have it. You know, some of these guys will be able to defend because they're not like superstar talents. But when it comes down to like, you know, making shit happen, we really just don't have that size. And truthfully, we really don't have the rim protection. And I know people have been all like, man, we should have traded up to get Tari Issa. He was he went one pick before us. We should have traded up. I don't necessarily disagree. In fact, I would agree with you guys. But, I, again, none of this stuff is making sense to me. You know, from face value, right? But you know what? Then I thought about it. And I looked at the numbers. This ain't Acme fault. This ain't Acme fault, people. Yes, it's Acme fault, but it's not Acme fault. This is what I mean. If you go look at where they are with the salary cap, they're like a million and a half under the cap, under the tax point. And I thought about it, and I remember all those stories I read last year, and I was like, that's what it is. They were told not to go over the cap. The owner said, do not go over the cap for this team. And then that's when I, when I read that, I was like, you know what? It's no longer their fault. Them not getting Mo Bamba, them not getting any of the other players that were willing to come here, it's not their fault. They can't do a single thing about that. If the owners are telling them, you cannot go into the tax for this team, which if you want to win, you have to go into the tax. There's no such thing as winning a chip and not paying the tax. You cannot win unless you go into the tax. And when I saw that, they're playing with handcuffs on. They're not allowed to actually go out here and make the necessary moves to get better because Mo Bamba wanted to be a bull. He was ready to sign with the Bulls. And they had the money for him too. With their full mid-level exception, they had the money to sign him. And they didn't sign him. Because they couldn't, because if they went and used the entire mid-level exception on him, they would have been in the tax. And I would have had, rather had Mo Bamba versus Andre Drummond. Mo Bamba also makes it easier for you to move off of Vooch in the middle of the season. Who, by the way, this is the final year of his contract and he does not have an extension. So that's something to keep an eye on. I'm not even sure he, if he can still get his extension now. Or he might be able to. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on this. I'm just telling you straight up. I'm not quite sure. But the point is, it would have been a nice, you know, point of emphasis going into the season. Because if Obama was playing better, you could have offered to trade Vooch as a salary dump to a team. And you could have you could have started Obama the rest of the way. And he's a much better defensive piece, even if he isn't quite the offensive piece. And you would have been good to go. But we can't we can't blame Acme for this now. We simply cannot blame Acme for this. This isn't an Acme issue now. This is a front office issue. And this team is gonna be forever fucked because of this front office. It is. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry to tell y'all. This this is the fate of the Chicago Bulls because they refuse to go into the tax to pay for a team that has a chance to win a chip, they're not going to ever get better. You got too much money tied up into your DeMar DeRozans and your Vucevic's. And yeah, Vuce falls off this year. Great. Cool. Who's your center? Even if you bring them back on like a $12 or $15 million a year deal, that's still not a whole bunch of space left. That's like 6 or $7 million. You know, okay, maybe you combine that with the the mid level exception. That's what a seventeen million dollar uh, contract for someone. Okay, if you're going to do that, 
then you still just spent all of your, your free money on a big, hopefully one that fits the team, but where do you improve the team elsewhere because you can't go get you know, more wings. So you have to wait another year for DeMar DeRozan's contract to fall off. And by then, Zoe has an option. Zoe has the option to take his option or to just completely say, no, I want a new contract, which opens up another can of worms. Oh, by the way, I believe Pat is up for an extension the same time as Zoe and DeMar DeRozan. And I think Ayo is up for an extension after this year with Vooch. So there's that piece of it too. Like there's really, like they're, they're tired, man. There, there's I don't see this team being any better. Matter of fact, I see this team being worse. I see this team being worse. They were the sixth seed basically last year. I don't, I'm not even sure if they'll be high playing. They may be ninth seed. They may be 10 seed, honestly. And it also depends on, like, okay, Atlanta got better because they got Murray, allegedly. But are the Knicks going to for sure get Donovan Mitchell? If the Knicks get Donovan Mitchell, and it depends on how they do it, if they keep Barrett and, Rand and Randall, you're saying that's basically your core three. Plus, they got Hartenstein, Mitchell Robinson, you know, at the five. And they just got Jalen Brunson. I mean, I don't like their backcourt because they're small. Y'all know how I feel about that. But at the same time, talent for talent, they're up there. And they are a team that basically was like right at the play-in and got considerably better and got their guy. The Celtics, they went and got Brogdon. I'm trying to remember what move Philly made. Philly made a move, and I can't remember right now. But Philly, they signed they signed James Harden. For, oh, they got P.J. Tucker. That's what it was. So they got better. The Bucks are always going to be around. They're, they were better than us. They're still going to be better than us because they have Giannis and Drew. And Chris Middleton will be back. I'm just saying. And so, I don't see how we uproot any of these teams that are already in front of us. Miami was better than us. Yeah, they lose P.J. Tucker, but they had plenty of bodies anyway. They'll still be better. So, I don't really know how we beat any of these other teams that's in front of us. Okay, Colin Sexton likely comes back to Cleveland if he doesn't sign somewhere else first. So I don't really know what to tell you guys. I don't. If they get a six or fifth seat this year, I'll be surprised. But I doubt it. So this is our free agency. And I hate to say it, but the hope of our season rests on how healthy Lonzo is. And how healthy and much of a leap Pat Will takes. That's our season, guys. Like, that is legit our season. But anyway, that's all I really got for y'all. I hope y'all have a good day. Peace.